Hey everyone, Duke here, and today we're going to be talking about some tips and tricks for completing the new Grasp of Avarice dungeon. As of today's patch, loot will be farmable from all encounters within the dungeon, and you'll be able to farm the rolls on weapons and armors as much as you desire. These tips are aimed at both the normal and master version of the dungeon, as well as if you're going for the solo or solo flawless. And if you don't have a team to run the dungeon with, or ever have any questions you'd like me to answer live, make sure to come on by my stream at twitch.tv slash dukeiscool, where I do dungeon and raid helps multiple times a week during the evenings. Now getting straight into the tips. Starting off as I usually do with any sort of PvE guides is my recommended mods and weapon setup. As always, I recommend running Taking Charge with Protective Light. This combo is my auto-include for all PvE content, and this dungeon is no different, especially if soloing or on Master Difficulty. For resistance mods, I highly recommend running double Void Resist for the Ogre Fight, double Arc Resist for the Sparrow Encounter, and one Arc and one Concussive Dampener for the final boss fight. I've tried a number of different resists for each of the boss fights, and these have felt like by far the most consistent and impactful for me. As for finders and scavengers, it's going to depend on your weapon loadout, but I've found a lot of success with a fusion rifle in my energy slot, and either 1k, sleeper, or galahorn in the heavy slot. I tend to use Fatebringer in normal mode, while swapping between an auto rifle or bow depending on champions for master. And of course, don't forget particle deconstruction if you're using any fusions or linear fusions. Now for some dungeon and encounter specific tips. The biggest tip I can give for the entirety of the dungeon is to take advantage of the fact that you get your super and ability cooldowns back every time you pick up 10 engrams. You can and should use supers extremely aggressively and often in both boss fights as well as the servitor shield encounter due to this mechanic. If running solo, you'll be the only one picking up dropped engrams, so it'll be pretty simple to take advantage of this. But if running with a team, especially on master, it may be prudent to assign someone to pick up most or all of the engrams that can best take advantage of these constant supers. In the final boss room, all three players will be able to pick up 10 engrams each, so there's no worry about who is picking up engrams there. For the ogre encounter, I've got three specific tips on top of running double void resist as I mentioned earlier. First, I would not recommend doing damage from the spot where you dunk the engrams. The ogre can and will push aggressively at times, and can potentially knock you off the map from this spot. Along these same lines, your DPS weapon of choice is something that you will want to consider. If the ogre pushes up on you, you may need to either back off or switch to your special ammo weapon to continue DPS if you're using something like 1k or galley, but sleeper or another linear fusion rifle won't have this problem. And lastly, keeping the Scorch Cannon with you as you move around will be a benefit in two ways. First, you'll have the Scorch Cannon with you to easily transition from one side to the other to get your 25 required engrams to start DPS. And second, you won't spawn in another set of adds with another Scorch Cannon fallen if you don't let your original Scorch Cannon despawn. I wouldn't worry about this once DPS phase starts, as you'll probably want a fresh cannon for a new round anyway, but it can be helpful to not have to worry about an extra set of adds coming from an unexpected direction, and it keeps the side where the Scorch Cannon spawns as a pretty much fully safe area whenever you have the Scorch Cannon. For the Sparrow encounter, I have three super quick tips. First, running double arc resist as I mentioned before is going to be helpful from all the fallen that will be trying to take you down. I'm not sure if wearing Risk Runner would give an additional benefit while on a Sparrow, but it may also be worth a shot. Second, the Always On Time Sparrow is actually a 190 speed Sparrow that will give you a lot more wiggle room to complete the encounter. It also has a perk associated with it that will allow you to have an even higher ability to survive on your Sparrow. And finally, and possibly the most important tip, you don't need to hit every button to make it to the end. No matter how much extra time you have on some of the earlier mines, it seems that you will always start with around the same amount of time to get to the next mine. So if you put yourself in a position that's hard to survive on, or just lose control early on to get a little bit of extra time you don't really need, it really doesn't end up helping much. The biggest thing is having a clean line on the push to mine D. I found the most success going up the right ramp to get the button, and then going through the left booster and getting the button in the skull before dropping down onto the final mine. For the final boss room, the first key is to know that you need 60 total engrams to start damage phase. The invisible fallen in the middle will drop 10 engrams, as well as 10 engrams dropping on every side whenever the scorch cannons are used on the receptacle on each side of the middle structure. Just note that you can't shoot the same side twice in a row. As before, you will get your supers as well as other cooldowns back whenever you pick up 10 engrams, 
so you can be extremely loose with your super usage here. I'd recommend killing the Sniper Shank ASAP, as it is by far the most threatening enemy in the room. Other than that, killing the Roaming Scorch Cannoner will also be very helpful. An additional tip here is that if you don't pick up the Scorch Cannon, it won't despawn and it won't spawn another Scorch Cannon Fallen. This can be very useful to take it down quick, and just leave the Scorch Cannon there as you take out other enemies in the room until you actually need the Scorch Cannon. I've seen some people recommend using the Scorch Cannon to help take down the Shank or the Invisible Mini-Boss in the middle, and you certainly can, but I find it to do too little damage for the trouble for my personal liking. I also found that when going from middle to the left side of the map, you'll want to hug the wall, or you may run into a unfortunate end if you mess up the jump. And one sneaky final tip I've made great use of is having a shoot-to-loot weapon switch on you. If your ammo falls into the lava water, or is just in a spot that you can't really get to at the moment, you can use shoot-to-loot to pick up the ammo safely from cover. I hope these tips helped make your normal, master, and solo runs of Grasp of Avarice just a little bit easier and smoother. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and have a wonderful day.